An Introduction to Pogel at the University of Pittsburgh Department of Chemistry. POGOL is an acronym that stands for Process-Oriented Guided Inquiry Learning. We can split this acronym into two parts, the Process-Oriented part and the Guided Inquiry part. Process-Oriented part deals with building soft skills. These are skills that are not related to your major or what you plan to study in the future. It's more related to how you relate to other people. These are important skills as you build your career. The part that's related to our content is the guided inquiry part. Guided inquiry is a, is a way of teaching different concepts that is more centered on the student and their development of knowledge. The POGOL project was started by a chemistry instructor at Franklin Marshall University. Therefore, many of the POGOL activities are related to chemistry, although this method of learning can be applied to other subjects. Let's take a moment to look at the different process skills that can be developed while doing POGOL activities. Again, these skills are important for being successful in the workforce. The first is communication. In order to be successful in your career, you'll have to be able to communicate both orally and in written form. You will also have to work in teams or work with other people to get tasks done. No one works in a vacuum. Management is a, another important process skill. Not only do you have to learn to lead, you also need to learn how to effectively juggle all of the tasks that you, that you take on. These are all important parts of being good in management. Critical thinking is also an important process skill. This helps you in the next part, problem solving. These two, these two skills go hand in hand to, be, to become successful, especially in, in the sciences. Another important skill is information processing, taking all of the data op and observations and being able to process it in a way that is meaningful. The final process skill is assessment. Determining what worked well and what didn't work well is an important way to move on and grow in your career. When we do POGOL activities, these skills will be built in the, in the background as you work in groups to complete tasks. One important part of POGOL is working in groups. And to more effectively develop these process skills, we, we assign different roles to people in your team. Assuming that your team has four, four people, each person will have the following four roles. The first role is the manager. The manager is the task master for the group. They make sure that, every, that all the tasks are completed in a timely manner. They also make sure that everyone in the group participates, that everyone has a voice. The second role is that of the presenter. The presenter is the person that represents the group in communicating with facilitators and the instructor. The presenter also makes sure that the, the group talks amongst themselves to solve problems before asking for help from a facilitator or the instructor. The presenter also gets consensus. He or she makes sure that everyone is represented in the answer that they give. Finally, the presenter might be asked to speak out for the group during report out or discussion sessions. We also have a recorder. The recorder's job is to make sure that everyone 
contributions are, re are recorded. They are the ones that write down the answers for the groups on a group copy of our activities. They keep track of the observations and discussion points that the group has by, by making a record. And they make sure that this record is given to the instructor for grading. The final group role is also very pretty important. That is of the reflector. The reflector helps to make sure that the group works together. It, he or she helps to build consensus. They also do step back and take a look at the dynamics of the group. Is everyone working well together? Does everybody participate? And is, does everyone's contributions get, get used equally? Whether as a reflector takes a look, look at these things, he or she fills out a reflector's report, which summarizes what the group has learned from the activity and insight into how the group works together. The reflector may also make suggestions on how the group could work better and be more effective together. As you participate with your team goals, team roles, you will also develop many of the process skills presented on the previous slide. The puzzle activities that you will complete are guided inquiry activities. These activities provide the scaffolding needed to guide you into building your own knowledge. Pogo activities are developed, designed around a learning cycle. First, you will take a look at a model. A model is either is usually a collection of information and data. You will look at you will look through, for patterns in this data, which will be and ask and ask to organize the data in different ways. The next step in your learning cycle will be concept invention. Once you organize the data presented in the model, you'll be asked a series of questions to look for patterns and specific rules of thumb. This will allow you to invent many of the concepts that will be covered in chemistry. Finally, you'll take those developed concepts and apply them to certain problems. This completes your learning cycle. Some activities have multiple learning cycles involved. Since you will be the center of developing content and for, for yourself, you might wonder what the instructor will be doing. Your instructors and your facilitators will end up being guides. This shifts te learn teaching and learning to be more student-centered, where the students are the ones with knowledge and the ability to de develop their new knowledge, while the teachers and facilitators help to guide that process. So how will this work? Our class seems pretty large, and it might you might think that it's pretty difficult to act to, to, to implement this. It will take some organization. So let's get started with some logistics. So the first thing is how do we form our groups? Fortunately, we have a natural way to do this. You'll sit in the classroom by your recitation section. Here's a seating chart for our classroom 150. You'll see that the Tuesday 8 a.m. recitation will sit in the in the front left-hand corner of the classroom. The Wednesday at 1 p.m. section will sit in the front right side of the classroom. The Tuesday at 6 p.m. section will sit in the back left of the classroom. And the Thursday at 6 p.m. will sit in the back right of the classroom. We will keep this separation for the entire term.
So this is our first pass at grouping you. The next pass will get you into groups of four. You'll see that each section of the class, each, each recitation section has six rows and with four seats in each row. These four seats will put people into groups of four and each person will have a role. You can sit wherever you'd like, but we ask that whoever is chosen to be the presenter for your group will sit on in next to the aisles so that it is easy for the presenter to interact with the facilitators and the instructor. As far as facilitators go, each group will have two facilitators. The instructor, yours truly, will be walking around the room as a floater to make sure that everything is going well. You might be curious about the color scheme used. Well, your professor is a big fan of Harry Potter, and yes, I sorted you by house. Okay, so how will we stay in, on task during our activities? So the first thing that's important is time management. You will be allotted a certain amount of time to complete part of the activity. It is important that you stay to this time and work efficiently and effectively together. To check on how you're doing with the activities, you'll be asked to report out once in a while. So give some answers to some of the activities, to the activity questions, or questions related to the activities. We'll be mainly doing this using Top Hat, which is the classroom response system that we'll be using for this course. We will also have some discussion. Finally, we'll always try to have some closure for our activities. This means we'll always come together to summarize the main concepts that we've developed in the activity and maybe even extend our understanding by going over a few other topics as well. So how can you get the most out of doing a POGO activity? So one thing you can do to prepare yourself is to read ahead. Look on CourseWeb for a specific reading for the week and read the and read the sections of the ch each chapter that are associated with the activities. This will help you from going in completely blind and you might feel a little bit more comfortable answering the questions. You also want to make sure that you engage with your group. Polo activities are designed to be done in groups. So if you have a group of four, it's very important that you communicate with all group members. Try not to break out into smaller groups or alone. You also want to make sure that you are actively engaged by filling out the activities and taking some notes on other things that are said during the course of the session. Remember that these activities take place of lecture notes in many cases, and you want to make sure you have a good record of what's going on during class. It's also important that you ask questions. Make sure that you relay these questions to your presenter who can ask the facilitator about things that you're confused about. And finally, sometimes at the ends of the activities, there are exercises or problems that we're not able to get to. It is very important to your learning that you complete these exercises and problems. The solutions to these exercises and problems can be found on CourseWeb. So you should complete these activities and then check your answers. You can also ask questions about these things during recitation or during office hours. Okay, I've just given you a lot of information about Pogel and we're going to do our first activity soon. So what can you do before the first activity to make sure you're ready? So the first thing you can do is get registered for Top Hat. We will use Top Hat for reporting out. Instructions on how to register and join our course through Top Hat are on CourseWeb. 
You might also want to skim your textbook. For this semester, you want to take a look at the beginning parts of chapter two, since we're looking at the nuclear atom in our next, our first activity. This will give you some background and might clear up some misunderstandings as you work through the activity. You could also, if you've met people in your recitation, think about your groups. If you do know people that in your class and that are in your recitation section that you would want to group up with, Organize to meet in class and sit in, in one of the rows. And most importantly, relax. I care very much about your learning and we will make sure that everybody is on the same page during the activities. So now we know all about Pogo, I look forward to starting our first activity tomorrow.